And thank you for listening to today's episode of JTCast, the official podcast of the Journal of Athletic Training. I am your host, Luke Donovan. For this episode, I will discuss the findings of the second part of the two-article series published in JAT on brain activation related to ACL injury risk, which is titled, Preliminary Report on the Train the Brain Project, Neuroplasticity of Augmented Neuromuscular Training in Improved Injury Risk Biomechanics, Part 2. Authored by Dr. Dustin Grooms and colleagues from Ohio University, Emory Sports Performance and Research Center, Emory Sports Medicine Center, Emory University School of Medicine, Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center, the University of Cincinnati, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, the College of New Jersey, and the McKaylee Center for Sports Injury Prevention. As a reminder, the article discussed today can be found on the JAT website, natajournals.org. And please remember that all content from JAT is open access to all readers, thanks to the funding from the National Athletic Trainers Association. Let's survey this scene by reviewing what was found during part one of the series of studies. It has been well established that the majority of ACL injuries are non-contact and commonly result from errors within the sensory motor system that result in excessive dynamic knee valgus. From an injury risk screening perspective, reports have found that young female athletes who have higher external knee abduction moments during drop landing tasks are at a greater risk of sustaining an ACL injury. The previous report identified that young female soccer athletes that were categorized as having a high ACL injury risk displayed different sensory and cognitive neuroactivation strategies when compared to peers with a low injury risk. In combination, these central nervous system processing differences may translate to a reduced capacity to maintain appropriate knee alignment and effectively alter their movement patterns in response to the ever-changing environment affiliated with their sport. To date, neuromuscular training has been shown to be moderately effective at reducing the risk of ACL injury. However, these training strategies are not always capable of changing or retaining the movement patterns affiliated with injury risk, especially among high-risk female athletes. Despite including balance, strength, and plyometric activities, traditional neuromuscular training does not include techniques that target the central nervous system processes that contribute to the aberrant biomechanic profile associated with the injury. As such, in order to maximize the reduction of the risk of sustaining an ACL injury, strategies should aim to improve high-risk biomechanics by targeting the central nervous system. Recent studies have tested this notion and found that neuromuscular training augmented with real-time interactive visual biofeedback can improve injury risk biomechanics during squatting and that this improvement can actually transfer to other tasks such as landing. In addition, resting state brain activity changes following augmented neuromuscular training was related to improvements in injury risk landing mechanics. These preliminary reports suggest that augmented neuromuscular training may be capable of filling the limitations to neuromuscular training without biofeedback. In order to further explore its capabilities of alternating central nervous system processes, the intervention effects on neuroactivity during a non-resting state should be explored. Therefore, the two primary purposes of this study was to first identify neuroactivity changes during a knee movement in a multi-lower extremity joint movement task following augmented neuromuscular training, and to second, determine the association between those neuro changes and injury risk movement strategies in high school female soccer players. To test these aims, 10 participants completed a six-week, 18-session neuromuscular training program augmented with visual biofeedback, while 10 participants completed no training. The standard neuromuscular training program included stations of weightlifting, plyometric, core development, and speed training. Specific to the biofeedback portion of the training, participants received a dynamic visual stimulus during specific exercises that was shown on a projector screen. The participant was instructed to maintain the shape of a stimulus while completing the respective exercise. The participant was unaware of this, but if they completed the exercise using high-risk biomechanics, the shape would then become distorted. The worse the biomechanics, the more distorted the shape would become. The participant progressed through a series of six exercises, progressing from body squats, followed by single-leg Romanian deadlifts, pistol squats, 
overhead squats, squat jumps, and finally tuck jumps. Before and after training, both groups completed a three-dimensional biomechanical assessment during a drop vertical jump task and underwent neuroactivity testing using a functional MRI. The primary outcome of the 3D biomechanical assessment was peak external knee abduction moment. During the neural activity testing, participants completed two different movement tasks while simultaneously having their neural activity recorded. The first task was an isolated knee extension and flexion task, where the participant was instructed to flex and extend their knee through a 45-degree range of motion without touching their heel towards the table. For the multi-joint leg press task, the participant performed a leg press movement against resistance. During both tasks, the pace in which the task was completed was standardized using a metronome. Here are the primary findings of the study. The augmented neuromuscular training group had significantly reduced their peak external knee abduction moment during the landing task relative to baseline. During the knee joint movement task, the intervention group increased brain activity in three clusters associated with sensory, visual spatial, and motor planning following the training. For the multi-joint leg press task, the intervention group presented with decreased activity within the primary motor and somatosensory cortex. There were no observed changes in biomechanics and neuroactivity for the control group. The training-induced increased brain activity for isolated knee movement was associated with decreases in knee abduction moment. In addition, the pre-post increased activity during the knee movement task was also correlated with the decreased primary motor and somatosensory cortex brain activity during the multi-leg press task. The altered neuroactivity during the multi-joint leg press task was not related to changes in biomechanics during the landing task. Overall, the study demonstrated that neuromuscular training augmented with visual biofeedback was capable of altering a biomechanic profile that is related to ACL injury risk during a landing task. Furthermore, the training program induced increased brain activity in areas of the brain that contribute to maintaining knee position. Following training, there was reduced activity in the sensory motor cortex during the multi-joint leg press task, which may represent more efficient neuromuscular capabilities. It is important to note that this improved capability was not associated with improved peak external knee abduction moment during the landing task, but may be secondary to increasing muscular strength from the training as opposed to impacting biomechanics. In summary, the findings of the study suggest that neuroactivity changes resulting from augmented neuromuscular training may provide a pathway to maximize the effects of ACL injury risk reduction training programs. Well, that's it for today's JAT cast. Please remember to rate and subscribe to the podcast, which is on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, and Stitcher. You can find out more information about upcoming podcasts and other JAT events on our Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram accounts at JAT underscore NATA. Thank you for listening and keep a lookout for our next JAT cast episode.